Oh, the Silas does do what he's intended to do in this matchup. As, uh, yeah, uh, this is continuing to go not so good for Keen, who doesn't have a lot of mana either, as Dread's going to make his way and look to try and save this one. Ooh, misses the abduct, unfortunately, but Kana now still trying to get out, not going to be able to. Dread's going to grab that first blood and the horse off to a great start. Well, now Cuz making his way in, wanting to try and deny this, but not going to be able to. Dread actually just having a pretty good time right now. And again, T1, just run out the clock. You don't actually need to do anything. That's okay. Let's have a look at this one more time. It's just uh, pretty elementary, to be honest. Dread just comes in and kind of flashes. If duck doesn't matter, is uh, there's no way you're peeling yourself away from this horse. I think Very easy kill. I think Keen was like preemptively throwing for like an oh, over the wall flash, flash if he yeah, went, like hot yeah, flash. Yeah, he went for it. Which I, uh, I mean, imagine Bang still on the bottom side of the map. Teddy's rotating up. Keen picks up a nar. There's the big old nar into the walls. They're trying to take down Baker. The encore goes completely wide as Cuz steals away the Rift Herald. And Teddy's just killing Lahens in the mid lane somehow. Good wall up there as Kane is going to get taken down. And remember, this is a fight where the ulti. Yeah. That's not the damage that you need, nope. right? And the hacker him at this point in time, while strong, doesn't have the base movement speed and the pressure. So what you see here is that there isn't actually enough damage to immediately take them out. Faker also uses the shield on himself. And then all of a sudden, like, your entire combos have been used. Um, and then Kana is still in Meganar form. And this is also the value of the Meganar, right? Like, the resistances that you get, you're basically unduelable. Silas is a melee laner. Uh, yeah, Faker's just under the turret and he's dead. Um, Bang just he pops back from a replay and a thing happens. Um, as uh, we see yeah, a thing see from uh, earlier. This was Lehens getting caught out. Ah, yeah. So he engages oh, Teddy. Teddy he eats him up. Eat him. And then Teddy's like, thank you. Bye-bye. Really appreciate that. Very nice of you. Okay, yeah, so it's just a nice roam roller play from the hands while Faker gets greedy. Yep. And uh, bang. Killer instincts in. Okay. So it's uh, just a little bit too easy. A little bit unfortunate, but sometimes there's a cow. But he is still there. I mean, theoretically, his carrier, he might not be, as uh, he has a lot of great health. That's a lot of teleports as well. Good exhaust onto Dread as carrier. He can still get a lot of value here as Kana just gets back to Phalanx has been reformed. Chrono Shift is very good, but unfortunately, the Silence now finds himself in a very rough situation. Now dueling Teddy. If he gets another Kingslayer, and he does, he might be okay, but no, not going to be enough. As Cuz got devoured as well, he's going to be safe in T1. This is with a tele double teleport, and then all of a sudden, instead of a gank with a possible counter gank, this turns into a straight up 5v5, right? And this is the dream for T1, because they don't actually get on top of Teddy. Teddy is fine, he uses Graviton to zone away, and then here we get the ultimate, finds two people combined with the CC that Kana provides while he's frontlining, and sure, the health boss go alone, but the only one getting attacked here are the front line of T1. It's Kuz, Kana, and Carrier taking damage. Shook. Oh, and Kuz, how did he sub Carrier coming in with the good. absolute save? Just beautiful. As uh, Kana might be in trouble. Yes, he's just going to be taken down here as uh, Kane still tanking that turret. One more. And, uh, oh, Chrono Shift comes out. Not actually quite going to be enough as Lehens may just die. There's a flash <laughs> smite from Kuz. Okay. It's like if you don't... I, 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 I figured it All out. Right. Every time we get back from a replay, uh, someone on T1 dies. Well, uh, Bang going to have to flash because I needed to... Um, it's working out decently well, and Kana so close to surviving this. Uh, unfortunately, four people is a little bit overkill. If you're Mega Yeah, Nard, so close to getting his Mega Nard too. Exactly. Um, if you do get, you know, the Mega Nard here, then you probably you knock him into the wall and cause fines. So yeah. Three kills. But not really working out. I mean, you can choose here as well as Cuz, right? You can smite both. Yeah. But he went for key. It's personal, yes. I'll have you know. <laughs> no. He's doing very well. That being said, now can... Oh, I've seen this one before. Is this Actually, a replay? Mega. Is this another... He does get the, the Mega now this time, but uh, it's not going to be enough. Bang's going to grab that. And Unbreakable Will from Lehens does mean that everyone's for patience here, definitely. Uh, for Lehens, as uh, Kerry is just going to spot the cow. Sorry, Kana is going to spot the cow. As, uh, there's the headbutt back. Dread is going to turn up, though. And is it going to be three deaths very, very quickly? The answer is no, as Cuz is booking it here towards the bottom side. He's going to get stunned up by the Everfrost as the uh, bombs are put down. They'll get the inhibitor turret as well. Chakrams are available. I'm pretty sure they can. Yeah. If they, if they want to go for it. It is a risk, though, but they do have a great front to back. I think theoretically they could go for this. They just need to stall a little bit so that the turret is gone. 
Yep, they might actually have enough Mega Nut timing as well. They absolutely do. Because now, as long as T1 keep it together, exactly what they need to do. They need to fight in a ball. That's how Seraphine works so well. There's the Gnar back into the dead turret. Bang! Has to use his ult. He has the Chrono Shift as well, and he's desperately trying to die. Does so. Gets down into that ultimate. Bang now. But, oh no, it's just not enough. Cuz is just going to solo him out there on the back line. And T1, they have a front door open. The they can just hit. end the game in almost sub-20 minutes. Teddy, so close to death, but he's alive. Good pastrami sandwiches. Sure. It does that? Is that? Does that? Is that? Oh yeah. Sort of I'll show. I'll show you the place. Okay. There's, there's yeah, a yes. place just up the road. It's really, that, really that sounds lovely. Um, there's, you know, a lot of meat to this composition. Uh, I guess Faker is the pickles. You know, like providing that intense flavor. Oh yeah. And as long as Teddy's alive, which I guess is your cheese dip. Uh, Who's the bread? Completely fine. It's Carrier. Car He's Carrier it all is the bread. Yeah, that's okay. It's, it's I, I, I can feel it. It's it's cousin and Carrier, right? Like they, they sandwich everyone between them. Is pickle really a sandwich thing though? Like I don't try know. and add more pressure. Just taking the inhibitor doesn't seem to do too much here. Is now cuz comes on over, gets a little bit of a stun on the hands, but he's not exactly the priority target here to be taking out first. But T1, I mean, they don't take a lot of damage in these fights. As Carrier, that Grey Health now starting to stack back up. Cannon not going to get slowed down. Situation like this, which hopefully should be able to. Well, here's uh, the Abyssal Voyage. As Cuz is in relatively close proximity. But he's by himself right now. The Baron is going down pretty slowly, however. Cuz is up a level. Yeah. I've seen this from Afrika before, but Cuz is going to get exhausted. Can he get in and steal his weight? The answer is no. That's a brilliant pulverizer's bank immediately there. Faker going to go golden, though. He's buying so much time as Teddy. Not dead just yet, but finally does get taken down. But the answer is the Hecarim and the Kaiser out of the fight. The Zillion also obliterated. Keen trying to be our hero, but the answer is absolutely no way, my friend. Lahens, it's him against the world, but there is one Nexus turret and one inhibitor between Afrika's life in playoffs and not. The catfish is fishing for the hands, but all he needs to do is cancel the backs. The push is coming in here, and T1, even though they found Teddy there, like Faker staying that. alive for that long. Listen, listen, Afrika is down this much gold, and they're still making it work. That's just beautiful. I mean, they managed to get this, uh, this Baron. This is still a 50-50 though, so we're not exactly super happy with uh, how this one uh, went, but La Hens, my god. I mean, there was no better way to start this fight off, if, if but Keen, it just wasn't enough. Listen, if Keen hits that knockback into the wall, this fight is over, like, immediately. Yeah. The problem is that both Dread and Bang on top of Teddy is actually too much damage. Uh, fortunately, with Kana there, they actually do take him down, and then once you're in this stage of the team fight where both carries are removed, the lack of effective DPS basically just means that T1 wins, right? Because they have Seraphine. Like, it's as easy as that. Well, I, I wouldn't count on it. He's going to get level 14 now. I mean, the Hecarim is still very strong, like you were talking about. And Inni's going to go. Lehens, looking for that flank plays. That's the stolen Encore onto T1. Carrier still trying to tank this one up, but the Aphelios is largely untouched. And oh no, Keen was going in for it. Then immediately gets Nard back. Beautiful defensive play as the Aphelios picks up yet another kill. He is taken down, but now it's two versus four. And I think Afrika may just be done. His cousin's going to chase down Fly. He's going to have to kill him a couple of times, but there's no flash. And I just don't think he's going anywhere. Good Everfrost, but that is goodbye inhibitor. And the rest of T1 is looking to just end this game. And Hecarin is so insanely strong. You see it there again. The only reason that Teddy stay alive for all of that, the coordinated dive, the on-call from Keen, is Carrier, right? Like without yeah. that, without, we, we, we mean Tom Ken so much because it's such a, I don't know, like if it, if it was a sandwich, it would be a bad one. But in this scenario, it's just the ingredient you need, right? He yeah. is tasty and firm bun that keeps it all together. and.